okay so in first part of this tutorial what we did was we developed a coupled thermomechanical model which was running fine um, in this um, uh, second part what I would like to do is I would like to add a little complexity to the problem and um, see the whole thermomechanical loading behavior on the part so basically uh, moving one step ahead of what we did last time um, initially what we did was we developed this block i uh, had uh, encastered this side and applied thermal load on this side um, you can look at the previous video if you have not watched it already so you can catch up on what we are going to do today really quickly um, uh, what I, I would do now is basically mm, I want to keep this model I want to keep this material model um, assigned to it I just want to uh, change some boundary conditions and um, see um, the results also I realized that last time our mesh was not so good so I would like to refine it a little let's say reduce it to what it is now reduce it to half of what it is now or double the number of elements and see okay uh, so we can better record the responses and see the results uh, then basically what I did earlier was as you can see here I had fixed this side and applied thermal load on this side and we could see the temperature transfer um, we will see that again in this simulation but I just quickly want to change this boundary condition from this side to the bottom um, and on this side of um, the block we have already applied a thermal load now I just what I quickly want to do is I want to apply um, in one simulation a compressive load and one simulation a tensile load I have made a um, um, a small mistake here basically what I should do is I should just copy the model um, uh, TM part 2 um, and then do all the modifications in this one so we can have two different jobs and two different models and things like this okay so boundary condition is already shifted down here what i next want to do is i apply i want to apply a, a compressive displacement so i will name it disp and in the initial step what i would like to do is i would like to fix all these three hmm. um in the next uh, um, uh, uh, step so it is propagated what I want to do here is I want to uh, I want not to fix in u2 direction so u2 is y direction this way and I want to not fix in this direction because there will be certain expansion on this case and then I want to apply a compressive displacement of um, I think this whole length was um, 10 or 20 centimeters and I would like to apply of let's say 7 uh, centimeters so minus 7 e minus 2 and it cannot be instantaneous it has to have um, um, a certain amplitude and therefore I am defining amplitude of uh, this and initially at time zero this is zero and at time five which is the total step time it is one and this is what i want to define assign here okay uh, and dismiss the load we have applied is already uh, 500 energy to power six surface heat flux on this side so basically this side will be heating up and I have applied compressive um, displacement on this side so basically we are moving this side down and basically because the material will be softening on this side and will be at room temperature on this side so we should see a difference of uh, distribution of stresses and strains and uh, material softening will happen on this side whereas it will not happen on this side and we will be able to see some differences of uh, the 
the mechanical components distributions due to the temperature difference uh, and also keep in mind that uh, with time so when this is compressing this temperature increase it this temperature is um, it is constantly flux so this side is heating up continuously initially when this will start deforming all the block will be on same temperature but when it will be around seven centimeters compressed then this side will be more hot than this side and we, we, we should be able to see some results let's create the job and um, see the results okay i want to use multiple processors and submit okay let's see how um so basically um when we are running um, simulation what we want to um, see is how quickly it is um if it is converging if it is converging then how quickly so seems to be running fine seems to be running fine if we can take a look at the output 14 frames have been written um, there are some warnings um, no valid radiation output okay that's fine cannot be restrained okay cannot be restrained okay um, seems normal to me and it is running so already at uh, point one basically because i start from a very small number and then in the steps module what i have defined is that uh, per increment it should not increase um, change the temperature for more than five degrees and probably therefore it takes some time to um, run the simulation and you can see that it has already achieved the maximum time step uh, no, it is still going up. Okay. Um, uh, if we, uh, I just want to quickly um, see if it it is behaving as I expect it to behave. So I have fixed it from the bottom, and I am applying compressive displacement on this side and um, temperatures are applied on this side and this side is cold um, if i look at the temperature distribution so i can see there is a certain amount of temperature distribution on this side and if i see u um, it is magnitude let's say u2 so i see um, uh, the material um, in compressive direct in in, in 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 negative y direction deforming that's um that seems normal and interesting let's go to the last frame that has converged uh huh okay so it has already compressed down to um almost four millimeters we are targeting um seven centimeters interesting uh, now as it is a thermomechanical simulation so you can see that um, um, th it, it is taking some time in um, um, in providing the desired results so it is not um, super fast although seems seem, seems okay to me seems seems normal to me hmm um uh what uh, uh, for for a, a while the simulation is running i would also like to talk about a few other things um for example um what we can also do is we can also define a film condition uh, by using this interaction properties on a certain side and then there we can uh, by using this uh, command we can um, um, define a uh, certain amount of cooling there it can be air cooling water cooling or just normal um, for for radiation uh, for um, radiative heat transfer out of the body or into the body there are certain other uh, properties but we can basically use it for convective heat transfer basically that's what i'm using to run um, um, simulations where i just know how much convective heat transfer there is and just quickly assign it to a certain 
40. We will see that in uh, the future simulations. Let's let's look at. Okay, it it, it is taking time. Um, results. Okay, if I want to look at the last frame, it is this one. Mm -hmm this one okay so it is already um, um, deformed to a certain limit probably i hope that temperatures would also have is is, is not so high it is 273 degrees this aisi 4340 really starts softening up after um 500 degrees centigrade so around 600 700 it, it really softens up and then we can see a difference but of course if i see probably i know that if i will see the stresses i would see a drastic difference so we already can see um, that um, if i would like to take a look at not one one two two yes so the stresses on this side are a bit higher than on this side because of the material softening and um, uh, deformation and therefore less stresses we can see on this side also um, not yet because the temperatures have not really um, increased quite much so still waiting for that um, so deforming and hmm uh, okay, so um, I'll uh, let the simulation run for some time and um, uh, when it is complete, so I have complete deformation and higher temperatures, then we can uh, talk about uh, the results a bit and see the difference in uh, the response of the body under thermomechanical loads Okay, so I made a few changes in the simulation what I did was I fixed it from I fixed the geometry from this point this end uh, let's see the assembly yes I fixed it from this point and I released this whole um, side so the whole bottom in X direction so it can deform in X direction uh, can 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 uh, freely move in um, X direction cannot move in Y direction or cannot rotate and this point is fixed so when we will apply compression this brick can basically deform and the simulation completed um, if we look at it it started at 1355 and it ended at 1402 so seven 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 minutes eight minutes something like that um, when we look at the results quite interesting if you look at the uh, temperature distribution we see that the highest temperatures were around 765 on this end and then uh, this relatively this whole um, part is uh, under at room temperature um, when we look at the um, stresses we see that uh, there is uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so there is no stress basically in um, in X direction and we can see that there is a strong stress gradient on this side and um, there is no stress on the other side um, not really what I wanted but yeah you you, you get the gist also uh, um, equivalent plastic strain is now Point three, so thirty percent here on this side, um, and then it is up to a certain depth here, and then there is no plastic deformation here. Um, hmm. Log the logarithmic strain is the same. So now we can see that during deformation, uh, if we want to see the deformation, we can see that in, 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 in Y direction, there was a lot of deformation. So seven, seven centimeters, uh, this end and this end did not move at all. So there was a uh, um, high compression, but as I allowed the part to move in this direction, so there were not really a high stress accumulation or things like this in 
in, in this direction only due to the thermal load on here and also plastic strain and then other factors so uh, yeah uh, now as we have completed the um, simulation which is coupled thermomechanical uh, setup uh, what I would um, now like to do is um, in 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 the next video so this part is complete we have developed a model with coupled thermomechanical approach where i'm applying a thermal load and applying a mechanical load and um, the part is deforming and it is heating up and everything is running in um, in in all together and it is just a continuous thermal load and it is um, a ramp deformation so um, now one part of the simulation is complete we know how to develop a thermomechanical model um, next up uh, we will move in the direction of crack propagation so I have already made a video with the contour integral crack and its um, post processing if you have not watched that video please go and watch that video um, because that is what I will build on in the next one and um, yeah um, see you in the next video and thank you